I'm Namrata Nadkani, the founder and CEO of Intent Communications. And today we're going to be talking with Andy Loretta, who is the Senior Director of Maritime and Business Development at Orbcom. So Andy, Orbcom has operated AIS-enabled satellites for nearly a dozen years now. Could you tell us a little bit about satellite AIS and how Orbcom has been involved in its development? Yes. Uh, hi, Namrata, and thank you for having me. So Orbcom has been involved with satellite AIS since the very beginning uh, when the U.S. government reached out to us right after 9-11 to assess whether vessel broadcasted AIS messages could be collected uh, from space um, so they could be tracked over the, the horizon for homeland security purposes. Uh, Orbcom was awarded a concept demonstration uh, um, contract by the U.S. Coast Guard in 2004 and then launched the first commercial AIS satellites in 2008. And since then, we've expanded our AIS data service to include uh, terrestrial AIS as well. And we're now planning to launch our fourth generation of AIS satellites this year with AAC Clyde Space. Satellite AIS has been called a game changer for a wide range of applications. Could you tell me what these applications are and how would you describe satellite AIS's impact on each of them? Yeah, so satellite AIS revolutionized what we knew about vessels out in the middle of the ocean in that we now have visibility into what goes on from the time one port to the time they've showed up at another. So things like what were they doing along the way? Which route did they take? Did they stop anywhere? You know, suddenly we can see all of this activity that has never seen, been seen before. And from a maritime and security, uh, safety and security standpoint, it enabled much more responsive and effective search and rescue operations, for example. Um, it also allowed for authorities to identify bad actors in such applications as illegal fishing, oil spills, uh, counter piracy, and trade sanctions as well. So from a commercial standpoint, it also allowed shippers to better track their goods and vessel owners and operators to keep tabs on their ships and those of their competitors. Um, commodity traders, um, it helps them better understand where supply of oil and bulk products were relative to market demand. So there's a lot of ways that illuminated a lot more information for all those different applications. And I think it's great because, as everybody knows, visibility is so important and it's becoming more and more expected. So what are some of the use cases that we see now for satellite AIS that may not have initially been anticipated when the technology was first developed? One application that has been um, pretty hot in the last couple of years, which you're very familiar with, Namrata, is uh, the reduction of carbon emissions by vessels. And so being able to track where these vessels are with AIS and able to correlate that information with where you've seen carbon emissions has helped be able to um, enforce and reduce those carbon emissions from, from ships. Um, well, you talk about visibility. So from a commercial standpoint, supply chain visibility or where is my shipment has really come a long way in the last few years um, with the ability to correlate other information like bill of lading uh, and other data with AIS to get more timely updates on shipments. And machine learning and artificial intelligence has really helped that along as well. Um, AI has also helped in developing more accurate uh, predictive analytics, such as you know, where is the vessel going to be based on where it's previously been. And this has helped tremendously improve monitoring for trade sanctions compliance and, and also counter illegal fishing applications. So it's, it kind of transcends all of the different applications that you have uh, with the acceleration of the technology that we've seen. So I'm trying to do a little bit of future gazing and could you tell me what is next for Orbcom Satellite AIS Constellation? So right now Orbcom is awaiting the launch of the AAC Clyde Space uh, AIS uh, Kelpie sats. Um, the name Kelpie is what the in Scottish mythology was the name of the horses that guarded uh, waterways. So we thought that the name was pretty fitting um, for the satellites and given uh, Clyde Space's heritage in, in Scotland, it, it seemed to fit pretty well. So the first one is expected to launch in June of this year. The second satellite is expected to launch a few months later. And then we're also working with uh, AAC Clyde Space and Saab on a VDES or VDES concept demonstration satellite, 
So VDES is um, VHF Digital Exchange System, and it's kind of like AIS 2.0. It, it basically expands the bandwidth for AIS type communications and allows for larger two-way messaging between ships and shore. So we're gonna be providing a space component to expand VDES on a global basis. And beyond those two initiatives that I just mentioned, we're, we're always looking at other opportunities to incre increase our uh, global uh, AIS data uh, collection and capacity, whether that's um, on other space-based platforms or, or even terrestrial, uh, terrestrially. And you know, right now we aggregate the widest source of terrestrial AIS data from third-party networks in addition to our satellite AIS service. I mean, that's really interesting, particularly given just so many applications that are now being built that are really reliant on reliable data and you have so much of it. And the fact that you can connect ships at sea, which was previously a black hole to, and I believe you're very active on the land sector as well. So you're kind of giving the entire supply chain. That's absolutely fantastic. So can you give us a little bit of insight into any other maritime solutions that Orbcom is currently working on? Yeah, this year we're going to be launching a product called the MT5000, which is a dual mode AIS and Orbcom OG2 satellite device that's designed for small vessel tracking. And it's a smaller size battery powered product that will initially be marketed to uh, national artisanal fishing fleets, um, mainly in the developing areas of the world, like in Asia Pacific and Africa and Latin America and in the Middle East as well. And collectively, there's millions of these small fishing boats around the world that don't have any monitoring systems today that a, a, a Coast Guard or authority can, can monitor them with. So um, they're looking for an easy to use, low cost solution for tracking their fishing fleet. And we believe the MT5000 will address this requirement very well. I mean, that sounds fantastic. You're looking at increased visibility for general shipping on the waves. You're talking about tracking containers on land. You're talking about even being able to track safety for fishing fleets. This is fantastic. So I cannot wait to see what Orbcom will do next. And I look forward to our next chat. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much, Namrata.